Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Yeah, I'm a little disorganized this morning. It is good to see everybody. Let me just, when I'm in Alabama, I don't have my normal setup with my ring camera. I don't have all my normal setup. So uh, it is great to see everybody. Welcome to Word for Your Wednesday. It is going to be a glorious day, everybody. So let's go ahead and pray. And we're going to just go right to God's word. Jesus, I just love you so much, Lord. I thank you for this day. God, it's an honor to step into this day and know that you are by our sides, Lord. We thank you for your word today. God, I just pray for each person who's either joining live or joining, uh, catching the replay, God, that they would begin to get a hunger, that you would begin to stir us, God, that we would want to know you more, God, that we would want to know your word. And Lord, I also pray that today, um, as we just remember, Lord, and just seeking after you and remembering all the things that you've done as we are in this week, Lord, uh, getting ready to celebrate Easter, but we remember what you did for us on the cross, Lord, and let us not become familiar with that. Let us not just brush that off, but let us truly remember what you've done for us, Lord, and the great love that you have for us, Lord. We love you so much, and uh, I ask just a blessing on this time together, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. Let me see. I'm a few minutes late here. Good morning, Lynn. Thank you so much for joining. So, um, I was sitting here the other day, I just came down to Alabama for a couple of days, and um, if y'all could be praying, I came down for an event at the university tonight. It's uh, an event, it's like a revival service for college students, and my church down here, they're uh, helping volunteer, and uh, one of my friends, she said, hey, you want to come down and volunteer at this event, so this is going to be uh, tonight, I believe it's like 7, 7.30, it's for college students, it's like a revival service, and I just want to be where God is moving, and I don't know what I'm going to do as far as volunteering, but I'm here, and uh, I'm just hungry and excited for what God's going to do in the lives of those college students, so if you could be praying, I think it's called Unite Us, um, and uh, just, just be praying. So uh, I was sitting here the other morning, and I began to read uh, I, I just kind of flipped to it. I was in the book of Matthew and around chapters 26, 27. And I began to read, you know, what was occurring the week before Jesus was crucified on the cross. And, you know, I began to read and I, and I started looking. I was like, gosh, he was treated so badly. Like he knew what was about to happen and he did it anyway. And it was really like a lonely time for Jesus and it was a time where, you know, like he was just doing the will of his father. He was speaking. He was telling people about salvation. He was telling about his father in heaven and the religious people, the people, you know, the people in positions of authority, you know, they didn't see it. They were blinded. Sin had blinded them. They didn't realize that they had, you know, the savior of the world who was about to um, who was about to die on the cross. They didn't realize that that is who had been in their presence. And, you know, I began to think about it. I was like, Lord, like, I don't want to become familiar just to the point of, oh yeah, it's Easter time. Yes, Jesus died on the cross. And after three days he rose again. But as I began to read in the word, I really started to, to, to think about like, how was Jesus feeling, Right. I wanted to think about like he knew he could have asked his 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 dad to like, hey, can this just pass for me? But he knew he couldn't do it because he knew the love that he had for us. He knew what he had to do in going to the cross. Right. And, um, you know, the, the people that were there, the people that were bringing judgments against him, you know, it was just like they didn't realize what they were doing. And so today, um, first of all, I want to encourage you, you know, we don't have time to read these portions of scripture leading up to the day that Jesus was crucified on the cross. But the one thing that I want to encourage us in today is that we don't want to become familiar. We don't want to be familiar with the story of Easter and say, yes, you know, this is what happened. Jesus, thank you for doing that. But to really seek after the Lord, to really go after his presence, to really acknowledge and think about, wow, 
you did that for me, right? It, it's a personal thing, right? And every person that, you know, came to accuse Jesus, he went to the cross for them. It was a personal gospel, right? And so as we go to his word and to think about what he did for us, it was because of me. It was because of you. Each one of us, Jesus went to the cross went to the cross for. And that's a personal gospel. And that's something that a religion can never give you. And that's what I was thinking about. The religious leaders of this time, the people who were so educated, who thought they knew everything, right? The people who went to church or synagogue on Sundays, they didn't realize what they were doing because there was no relationship with him. And so my prayer uh, for myself and, you know, where I want to encourage y'all in today is to continually go after the Lord, to continually acknowledge and think about what he did. Don't just brush off, you know, the story of, of the crucifixion and the resurrection, but to really think about it and to, to make it personal and say, wow, Lord, you did that for me. And he's di he did that for me. He did that for you. And for the thousands of years later, that people that would come to know him, not to come to know a religion, not to come to go to church and check off a box for the week, but to have that knowledge and to seek after his presence. So the scripture that I have for us today, so I want to encourage you, start reading around Matthew 26, 27. And you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can find the different accounts of the crucifixion and the resurrection. I just want to encourage you, pour yourself a cup of coffee, maybe even when we get off and just spend a few minutes and just really think about what he did. And I guess um, before I get to the scripture here, uh, I remember when The Passion of the Christ came out uh, years ago, that the movie, and I remember I saw it at the movie theater and I was just like, I had a hard time watching it. I was like, oh my gosh, like you never really realized, you know, and they did their best to, uh, do an account of what Jesus went through for us, but I'm sure it's even worse. I'm sure it was even worse of what he endured for us. And so, um, you know, to really honor him and thank him for the sacrifice that he made for us. Let's not, let's not become so familiar with that, that we just brush it off and say, yeah, thanks God for doing that. But to really thank him for what he did for that sacrifice. So this scripture out of Psalms goes back to remembering and seeking after God. And if you think about back in the Old Testament, when God moved, when he, you know, uh, took the Israelites out of captivity and all the times that he delivered them through the things, you know, what did they always say? God always says, remember, tell them to your children, right? There was always a remembrance. And, and when we remember things and when we take time to really think about the things that the Lord has done in our lives, we don't become familiar with it. Like, you know, maybe we received a healing. Maybe there was a time where God just like sent his angels to save our lives, right? Maybe there was a time in your life where, you know, there was no other explanation other than this was a miracle of God. This was a sovereign move of God. And so we want to today remember not only what Jesus did for us, but use this as a catalyst to remember and not and to make sure that we're not familiar, that we're not so familiar with the things that God has done, that we haven't forgotten, that we recount the faithfulness of God, because that's what he calls us to do. And as we recount that faithfulness, our relationship with him becomes all the more fresh again. We mature, we remember, and it makes us um, be ever so grateful for the things that God has done. Amen. So just a quick little scripture after that long introduction was, um, oh, thank you, Lynn. I got this tank at, uh, this is from Walmart, nothing fancy. And I just, it was from the kids section. And then I cut it off and made it my little style, you know, me and my little t-shirt. So Walmart kids section is where I found this shirt. I got it last year. Okay. So Psalm 105, um, in verse four says, Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember there in the, verse five, remember the, the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced, okay? I'm gonna see that again. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced, okay? And then if you go through the rest of Psalm 105, you know, it talks about the different things that, uh, you know, God did on behalf of the Israelites. And today the whole, uh, you know, 
idea, I guess, behind, you know, what I wanted us to take an inventory of today is, you know, asking God, first of all, remembering what he did for us in his resurrection, I mean, in his crucifixion and resurrection on the cross to not become familiar that, yes, it's just a story that we that we do and that's Easter, but to really have that time where we thank him and honor him for what he did for us. But then to take an inventory of our lives, you know how we like to do in Word Free Wednesday, to take an inventory in those areas. Lord, have I become so familiar? Am I seeking after you? If I become religious, if I just kind of check in off the box, I have my quiet time, I say my prayers, I go to church on Sunday, maybe I go to a Bible study, right? Has to be kind of come just like another task that we do. Or are we continually seeking after the Lord, seeking after his presence? You know, and, and one of the things that I was thinking about today, as I mentioned right here in the beginning, was that, um, you know, when my friend invites you, hey, do you want to come down here to uh, volunteer for this event? And I, and I was like, yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming because I want to go after wherever God's moving. I don't want to be talking myself out of putting my place in a situation where I can be part of what God's doing, right? And I think sometimes we can get so busy or we can get, you know, maybe we talk ourselves out and maybe it's a financial thing. Maybe, you know, we say we're too old, but to have that hunger to keep going after God, to keep seeking his face. And I think about uh, in the book of Daniel and Daniel, how he was in captivity in Babylon for so many years. He went as a young boy, he was like 12 years old when he was taking captivity, uh, being raised up in that pagan place of Babylon. And even though he never bowed down to the culture, it never stopped him from seeking after God, right? He didn't get so weary with the things of his environment that he was seeing, but he stayed tuned into the Lord. And even as he was older, God was still giving his, him dreams. God was still showing him visions of what was to come thousands of years later, right? But he still had that hunger to spend time with the Lord. And so, you know, I wanna encourage us today, when God is moving, when you get an invitation to go where the presence of the Lord is going to be or where you have an opportunity to be part of something that God is moving in and doing and to, to say yes, to, to not become complacent, to don't become familiar. Yeah, I've experienced the presence of the Lord. Yeah, I, I had that, you know, 10 years ago, I went to a revival service, but say, Lord, I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. You know, that song that says, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. And as we make that our prayer, as we cry out to God that we want more of him, we're not going to become complacent. We're not going to become just so familiar that, yes, this is just what Jesus did for me, but we're going to have that hunger and we're going to keep going after him and seeking his face and seeking his presence and remembering the things that he did. And as we remember the things that God did, that, that he did for us and sending his son to the cross, that begins to stir our faith. It, help, it helps us to remember and then it helps us to, to stir that passion that we have for him, that fire that we have for him and that we don't just become, yeah, this is what, what I do. Yes, I love Jesus and one day I'm gonna go to heaven, but it becomes new and fresh again. And that's what each of us wants, my friend. That's what we want is a fresh encounter with the Lord and not to grow you know, just so complacent that, yeah, this is this is what Jesus did for me, but really to acknowledge that we want more of him. Amen. Amen. Well, thank y'all so much. Let me see here. I've got my Cindy. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for coming on, Cindy. Let me pray for y'all. Jesus, we just thank you, Lord. God, I pray that today that you would begin just to throw some fresh wood, some fresh fire on each one of us, God, that you would begin to stir us for more of you, God, that you would help our minds to come alive with the things that you've done in the past, that we would really uh, just think about, you know, the things that you have done, Lord, especially during this week. And uh, Lord, let us never become complacent and, and not wanting more of you, God. Let us not become just satisfied with the God of yesterday, but to hunger more for the God of today 
and the God of tomorrow, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that you are ever so present in our lives, Lord. I pray just just for there to be a stirring in each one of us, God, just a stirring that we can't control, Lord, as we want more of you. I pray a blessing on these ladies who've joined me here live today and a blessing on all those who are joining via, via recording, God. May this week be the best ever in our walk with you, Jesus. May this week be the best ever, Lord, in our walk with you. And we know that your word says that the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. So God, what you did before in our past was so, so good, but what you're continuing to do today and what you're going to do in our tomorrows, Lord, we say yes and amen to it. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you, Lynn and Cindy, for joining me live. And we'll see y'all. Have a happy Easter and have a blessed day. Bye-bye, everybody.